shopping at Whole Foods? It wasn't that bad, actually. Okay. It really wasn't Is there actual people in there? Oh, yeah. They're like customers. And how do you not like get them to like bother you like are they bother, trying they to don't, they don't bother you um i they're not like trying to get in the camera or like you know no doing that so. shit i mean okay. i'm sure i'm sure they do but obviously do they know what's going on are you guys wearing top chef yeah, shit yeah. okay yeah they, hmm. i mean they definitely i'm sure they know i mean top chef's been on for 12 seasons yeah. at that time so i'm sure they're like oh shit they're, shoot, they're shooting top chef here <laughs> Yeah, and you you go to the same store every time. Okay, that's what I was going to ask you next. Okay, so after a while, you start to get to know the the butcher and the employees. Well, you know, I think um, there's a there's signage outside the door saying you know you have to you have to sign a release if you're shown on camera. So like if you're in the vicinity of the camera, you have to sign a release. Okay, like that that shopper has to sign a release. Like you might you may or may not be on camera. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Um, so then that covers the shopping. So then what is, what is the most challenging thing out of, out of everything in the show? Is it the challenge itself or is it the endurance for the day? I, I mean, it's a lot of everything. Yeah. You know, I, it's the being away from your friends and family for an extended amount of time. Yeah. But also, I mean, it's, it's fun because well, I mean, another thing that's challenging is you're living with a bunch of strangers that you don't know. Yeah. But the cool thing about that is you form, you know, these friendships that you have for life, essentially. And you're talking to a bunch of people who have the same interests as you. Yeah. Which is pretty cool. So you start to get to know a lot of these chefs and they're just normal people. Just like, yeah, you know, for sure. Me. Yeah. Even even Tom Colicchio. Well, that's well. We don't get to talk to the judges. You don't get to hang out no, with them we, much. We don't talk to them. Not even at all. Not even like an after no. ceremony. Well, af- after ceremony. What's after ceremony? I don't even know what that means. No. After uh, after party ceremony for after you won. Well, uh, for a few minutes. For a few minutes, because then you have to go back and do interviews and things like that. So. So you don't get to party all night with Tom Calicchio no. and Padma Lakshmi. No. They, they've, they've, they're on a schedule. What the know. fuck, bro? To, I'm to just saying. No, but they're they're awesome. They're yeah. awesome people. So very cool. Okay. Uh, what was your best experience while you were on the show, other than winning, obviously? Honestly, just the the friendship. Just the friendship. Yeah. yeah. I mean, still talk to everybody. You know, a lot of the the, the contestants. From, yeah. From the season. For sure. And I mean, it's essentially a top chef family like everybody kind of knows everybody I'll make the microphone for you. Yeah, everybody kind of knows everybody um from each and every season everybody knows everybody somehow one way or another we've done events together or met someone through someone it i mean it's it's a giant family at this point what, what are we on it's season 18 yeah so it's it's pretty crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's cool that you say, what are we on season 18? Yeah. Like, once you're part of it, it's kind of like, you know. You're always in the, the family. Damn. Mm-hmm. I, I, get, I inadvertently, because I don't, I don't do a lot of research, and I totally forgot that you had been on Top Chef and then you won. And uh, I just did the Joe Sasto podcast. Yeah. I was actually I'm talking like, to him I'm like, oh, today. You guys know each other. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It was. I'm sure. I'm sure this podcast is weird for people to do because they're like, you know. First of all, we're in your apartment right now. You know, I'm sure you've never done a podcast in your apartment before, no. right? <laughs> I've done. I've done I mean, this I thing. I think at the end of the day, we're just shooting the shit for so, sure. I yeah, hundred percent. That's all it is. I mean, we can do this shit in a parking lot. Yeah, it doesn't matter. But I think it's just funny, the stories behind it. Like, you know Joe way before I do, and I'm just starting to get to know you guys now. So it's like, let's see what happens, Mm -hmm. what comes of this. Um, But also, I think the industry is just super small, too. Like, everybody knows someone one way or another. Six degrees, man. Yeah. Kevin Bacon. (laughs) (laughs) I love that guy. Um I don't know why I got off on that tangent. I just I, I watched a 
they have this cop show. You like cop shows. Oh, they have this cop show with him and this other uh, agent on HBO. And apparently it's really good crime drama. Haven't seen I forget it what it's called, but check it out. Okay. Um, so when you started Top Chef, did you know in your heart, like, I'm going to fucking win? I mean, no. Mm-hmm. But obviously that's the goal. Yeah. That's why we're all there. Um, I just, honestly, I came in pretty fucking nervous, I'm, which I'm sure just like everybody else was, but I put my head down and I just did what I want, you know, just did what I needed to do. Yeah. And at the end of the day, like, yeah, it's a, it's a TV show. I just, I didn't necessarily want to be a part of the the drama whatever drama was going to form i just wanted to to put out good food and and that was it did you find yourself being coaxed to be part of the drama or not really i mean there are obviously there are a lot of things that happen between certain certain people People, yeah yeah but i mean that's that everybody there's a different dynamic you know between different people yeah not everybody is going to get along with everybody i mean that's that's the reality and you know i i think at the end of the day i just stayed out of trouble you know i just stayed away from all that like you know you have this person and that person arguing i'm just gonna sit and watch and eat popcorn and you know yeah like i'm not gonna engage in what's happening i'm just you know it is what it is Mm -hmm. so that last challenge happens who did you go up against the last the the final the final yeah it was me and Gregory Gorday. Okay. One of my best friends. Yeah. He's amazing. Yeah. Amazing chef. Were amazing you, competitor, too. Yeah. Was it uh, pretty decisive, the win? Like, did you know in your heart that you won, or were you like, I won on a technicality kind of thing? You know what I mean? Um, I think it was pretty neck and neck mm-hmm. to a certain extent, um, because you're not, when the... You know, when you do the judges table, you hear the critiques for on, on both ends, like his flaws and highs and, you know, my flaws and highs. It was for me, in my mind, it was pretty neck and neck. Like, you know, I had my faults. He had his faults. It's like, what are the de- determining factors? Yeah. You know, did I overseason something? Did I underseason something? You know, vice versa, um, things like that. So it's it was kind of like, you know. Who has it? Who won it? Like, mm-hmm. we just, we didn't know. Do you feel like the judges are being super critical? Like, extra critical? I think at that point, you have to be. Because, you know, you have to get down to the nitty gritty to decide on who gets it. Yeah. And the the cool thing about Top Chef is you're not, you're not judged on your performance throughout the entire season. You're judged on that challenge. That and dish. that challenge... That challenge that day alone. That that's awesome. Yeah. I, I like that. Cool. So you win the show. Um and who's the first people you call? Like who's the first person you told I won Top Chef? I called Michael Voltaggio. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And you tell him and what did he say? He I mean I'm I'm sure it's on TV, but yeah. <laughs> um he, I mean, he's just proud of me, and um, you know, obviously, he's like, I know you're not for for someone who's won the show before. Like, obviously, I wanted to do him proud. Yeah, you know, I, you know, I think I said throughout the show, like, oh, I'm doing it for him. Like, that's t- that's not what I meant. I meant like I wanted to obviously, I wanted to prove myself to him. In a way, you know, that I couldn't do at the restaurant per se. Yeah. I I wanted to prove myself that I, you know, I learned a lot from him and and that I can, I can too, I can do, I too can do good things. Mm. You know, I guess. I don't know. Am I saying it right? I don't really know. But It's all good. It's been a a long day, I think, for for both of us. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, So he obviously knows, like, you're not coming back to work here. Right, because you just won top chef. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> so. I think. Well, when I uh, when I had when I had come back before we went in for the finale. Yeah. Actually, um, obviously, he had to fill my position, which was you know understandable. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I actually, I kind of, you know, I, I went in and I was like, Hey, you know, I don't, what do I do? Like, where should I go? And, um, actually went to go work for his brother, worked okay. for Brian for a little bit, uh, out of Maryland. So I worked there prior to going to the finale just to kind of, you know, get some experience, some, you know, some different stages in and things like that. I actually worked there, but then um, I went up to New York for 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 a weekend and, and staged at Empeon oh, okay. with, uh, with Alex Dupac. Cool. Because I knew we were we were going to, to Mexico, so I kind of wanted to get some some Mexican cuisine yeah. down. And I know he was he's doing some cool shit. Um, very modern Mexican cuisine, and yeah, I kind of want to to get those flavors mm-hmm. in and to learn more about it. So after you did all that, uh, did the idea of starting your own restaurant kind of come about? No, not at all. Actually, mm-hmm. um, I definitely took some time off. Uh, traveled extensively throughout the entire world. Cool. I know I didn't. I mean, obviously didn't want to open up a restaurant right away i wanted to kind of see the world before i did that Mm -hmm. and because i know when you open up a restaurant you really can't do anything yeah you can't you know you can't necessarily step away as much as you know you can when you don't have any responsibility so yeah I, i traveled a lot um i did a lot of private events and and private chefing things like that i just Kind of put myself out there. Yeah. yeah and how, as how, much as I could. How long did you do that for? For four years. Four years of traveling. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Did the uh, the Top Chef prize money put you in a situation to be able to do that? Um, yes, mm-hmm. for sure. I mean, okay. it definitely helped. Um, I think prior to winning, I was living paycheck to paycheck. Yeah. You know? Just like any I mean, cook. living in LA, I mean... What cook can I honestly like? I I don't know how anybody can afford that. Like even when I when I had started at Ink, I was working two jobs. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's hard for to sure. be a cook and to not make money and to have to pay rent. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, um, you're bringing me back right now. Three hundred dollars a week paychecks. Yeah, rough times. Well, especially, I mean, luckily my car was paid off and all I was responsible for was paying car insurance Mm -hmm. and rent utilities here and there. But yeah, I mean, that was, that was it. That's a lot of money. Where did you live at that point in LA? I lived actually pretty close to Inc. Okay. Um, I walked to work every day. Oh, sweet. Yeah. So, but that area is not cheap. I think my rent at the time was, uh. $1,800. Eighteen hundred dollars. Whoa. Yeah, but I had a roommate, so okay, know, it was split down. Yeah, the middle. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, heard that. But there's um, no way like I could live like I mean before prior to that apartment I had, um, I lived in a duplex with two other people, so my my rent was really like eight hundred dollars, which yeah. is not bad at all. Huh. And then um. So I guess where you know where's the next step go? Where do you go after those four years of traveling? And are you planning on your next step during your travels, or are you sort of like I'm going to travel for four years and then figure it out after? I wasn't necessarily like, oh, I'm, I'm going to travel for four years. It was kind of it, it just kind of took me there. Yeah. Talked to a lot of different people about opening up a restaurant, and had a lot of deals fall through. Um, you know, obviously nothing set in stone and I wasn't really like actively like looking for restaurant spaces. You yeah. Know? Like I kind of wanted to take it easy, whatever, you know, comes to me, I was gonna, you know, feel it out. And if I felt comfortable doing it, I will. It was just, it was kind of like a feel thing. Like, am I even ready to open up a restaurant right now? I'm actually really glad that I took the, the four years and, and kind of found myself. I feel like if I had opened up a restaurant right after I won the show, it wouldn't have been a good restaurant. I'll tell you that. Because I needed to travel and see the world and experience all those different things that I experienced in those different countries. Mm-hmm. The food, the culture, everything. 
in order for me to kind of find 